There is always something that outperforms the other, but before making assumptions, it's important to weigh the pros and cons, isn't it? In today's video, we're going to compare solid-state batteries against the popular graphene batteries and which one stands out to be the best. When we talk about batteries, we have to realize that these contained units of energy hold the keys to our futures. They've taken forward the tech revolution. However, as hard as it may be to admit, not all tech is as progressive as it's deemed to be. For instance, the lithium-ion battery aka graphene batteries used in modern electric vehicles are a rather controversial reminder of what the industry tries so hard to shove under the rug. These batteries contain tons of matter and metals such as graphite, high-purity nickel, and soft metals like cobalt that during the extraction and refining procedures cause a substantial amount of damage to the environment by spiking up carbon dioxide emissions. That's not all, of course. Safety is another problem that graphene batteries bring with them, as these are highly prone to explosions and fires. And more drawbacks like these is what makes the argument for solid-state batteries even stronger. Meanwhile, resolving these environmental and hazard concerns that haunts its consumers. These modern, state-of-the-art power sources utilize a minimal but solid, stable layer of electrolytes that forego the extremely combustible liquid solution which is currently utilized by these lithium-ion batteries. And what's more is that they can store energy far more efficiently with more density. Interestingly, the electrolytes also act as the battery's divider, which is a much-needed component in the lithium-ion battery. This minimizes the risk of it catching fire and also the required raw materials needed for production of these batteries. The fundamental difference between solid-state batteries and graphene batteries lies in the composition of the electrodes that are present in them. Not to get too technical, but the main difference is caused by the cathode itself. Carbon allotropes can be used in the anode as well, however, so the cathode in a conventional battery is solely composed of materials that are solid-state specific, whereas in a graphene battery, the cathode serves as one that is composite of all the robust solid-state metallic material and graphene. The quantity of graphene in the composite can fluctuate, however. Depending on the programmed application of the batteries, graphene is primarily used to accentuate many of the already present advantages of conventional materials, but it also helps to make a breakthrough in terms of limitations offered by previous battery models, which enhances battery life and performance. Generally speaking, the electrodes in graphene work in two ways, either as a supplementary or a hybrid. As a supplementary material, graphene aids to keep the metal ions in a controlled order, which generally benefits the efficiency offered by the electrodes. As a hybrid material in the electrode, however, it functions more diversely. One may say these are generally more geared towards the facilitation of the transportation of the charge itself, where its high conductivity and well-ordered structure are imperative to providing an upper hand against its non-graphene predecessors. But if we're honest, this doesn't cut it. All of this tech talk still doesn't negate the fact that we are in need of shorter charging time spans and prolonged mileage. That too, without increasing the cost of battery packs and the risk of possibly overheating the batteries, starting fires. So what does this tell us? Unfortunately, we've reached a technical and innovative deadlock, and this is exactly what's become the biggest obstacle in making the electric car revolution take off. But it is to be noted that the perpetuating urgency in the much-needed change in battery technologies constitutes because of two reasons, the surging shift to electric cars in Europe and the Far East, and a globally increased demand for industrial raw materials, which can very well damage the long-term supply chain. To put it into perspective, the average number of electric car sales in Europe has doubled last year as stricter emissions criteria for new cars were launched. An exceptionally growing list of countries that range from the UK to Germany have settled on a ban for petrol and diesel cars in the next five to seven years. Meanwhile, the promotion of this green tech is now seen by governments as a lucrative method to encourage economic development. What do you think about this? Let us know in the comments below. But well, it's not without reason. In China, nearly 1.3 million electric cars were supplied and sold just last year. It's not even about subsidies anymore. They are now a negligible part of the total car price at just about a tenth, says Mark Mao, a research analyst at JP Morgan Asset Management. Sales are only going to go up. However, 
Such blatant optimism is powered mostly by battery makers decreasing production costs. <laughs> How? Well, the costs of lithium-ion battery cells, which are the most pricey element of an electric vehicle, have dipped down nearly 90% in the last decade, with the current figure being approximately $100 per kilowatt hour, according to Benchmark Mineral Intelligence. And while yes, electric cars remain 30% more expensive than conventional petrol-fueled vehicles on average, that gap is inching to be closed. Analysts forecast that price parity is just a few years away. Once that stage is reached, the demand for EVs will increase substantially. But to be a bit realistic, the limitations offered by batteries present problems, ones that could slow down the process of a full-fledged EV adoption protocol. There's the highly combustible liquid solution in batteries that makes recycling a pain. Pricing is also a problem. Constant corrections to safety protocols and energy retention increase the costs of these batteries, which are around $12,000 per car. This increases the overall cost of the car models. The entry-level Tesla Model 3, for example, starts at nearly $38,000 and the Hyundai Ioniq at $34,000. It doesn't help that the batteries are also logistically a burden, with them weighing over 540 kilograms for the Tesla Model S. Their size disrupts the design blueprint of the car as the additional weight makes electric cars much more bulkier than petrol-powered vehicles. They thus require significantly more power to cover the same distance, especially in cooler climates. Electric vehicle enthusiasts, though, seem adamant to accept these limitations and use hacks like not using the heater in the winter and increasing mileage by staying off the gas. But if we're honest, these problems cannot be addressed as easily, especially ones that pertain to safety. Traditionally, batteries have had a similar if not equal quantities of nickel, cobalt, and manganese. But a more recent industry formula has turned to increase nickel content in the battery to a more than 75% of the cathode. This helps optimize mileage and has the added advantage of utilizing less cobalt content, which lowers production expenditure. Another problem that applies to car manufacturers and smartphone makers is that as batteries have become a vital proponent for so many technologies, the cost of used raw materials has very nearly skyrocketed. This has therefore made the prices of everything expensive, making materials like nickel, lithium, graphite, copper, and coal cobalt even higher than it used to be, and coupled with inflation and a weak dollar, it's only bound to get nasty, we reckon. Head of Volkswagen's battery cell center, Frank Bloma, however, makes a case for solid-state batteries as the end game for their lithium-ion equivalents. It's simple. Solid-state batteries are safer, cost-effective, and give a more durable performance with minimal input. Battery cells can be arranged in a brick wall-like structure, making them easier to adjust into varying cars. They are also lighter, climax to a full charge in nearly 10 minutes, and have a higher energy density capacity. And lastly, recycling solid-state batteries is a much safer and simpler process than recycling graphene batteries will ever be.